welcome to this introduction to the Newcastle-upon-Tyne Bach Choir's next concert as part of the Early Music at Newcastle series. I'm Eric Cross, the choir's musical director, and this talk provides some background to the music we are performing in King's Hall on the evening of Saturday the 18th of March. This programme is entitled Not the B Minor Mass. The Mass in B minor is one of the most familiar Bach works. Indeed, the Bach scholar John Butt describes it as arguably Bach's greatest single work. It is unusual in that it was never performed in Bach's lifetime. Rather, it seems to have been compiled largely from other works brought together late in his career as a kind of abstract exercise similar to the art of fugue. Indeed, the music of Bach's great Mass in B minor spans much of his career. The Sanctus was composed for Christmas Day 1724. The Curie and Gloria, the Missa, were presented to the Elector of Saxony at Dresden in 1733 in the hope of gaining patronage and even perhaps a post there. While the Credo, Symbolum Nicenum, and the final movements, the Hosanna, Benedictus and Agnus Dei, were added during the final few years of Bach's life. The origins of the work are further confused by the fact that the majority of the movements were based on earlier compositions. Our concert programme, then, takes its cue from this fact and includes three cantatas from which Bach borrowed material for the Mass in B minor and also a different setting of the Kyrie and Gloria, not in B minor, but in G major. Feinen, Klagen, Zorgen, Zagen, BWB 12, written for the third Sunday after Easter, was first performed at Weimar, where Bach was music director to the court, on the 22nd of April, 1714 and he revived it almost exactly ten years later for performance at Leipzig. The cantata opens with a solemn symphonia for five-part strings, there are two viola parts, with an intricate oboe obbligato of the type found in other cantatas of this early period. The sombre minor key continues into the following chorus, inspired by the emotional text, weeping, lamenting, sorrowing, fearing. The opening section is a chaconne built over a repeating falling chromatic bass line, a wonderfully expressive passage which Bach must have remembered over 30 years later when he needed a setting for the crucifixus in the B minor mass, for he reused the music of the main section, transposing it down into the key of E minor. In the cantata, however, Bach continues into a more contrapuntal, faster middle section with more straightforward harmony before returning for a full repeat of the first part. <laughs> Thank you. 
When Bach was appointed cantor at St Thomas's Church, Leipzig, in 1723, one of his first tasks was to supply cycles of cantatas for every Sunday, excluding Lent, and feast days in the church year. Within a few years, he had completed at least four full cycles. Via Duncan dear Gott, BWV 29, was written for the inauguration of the new town council at Leipzig on the 27th of August, 1731. The exuberant opening symphonia, with its dazzling organ obligato, is based on the prelude from the E major partita for solo violin, BWV 1006, whose manuscript score was written in 1720 while Bach was at the court at Curtin. The piece was clearly a favourite, for the composer also used it in the wedding cantata BWV 120A. Indeed, he seems to have been fond of the whole of Cantata 29, for you know of at least two further performances in 1739 and 1749. The cantata's first chorus is built from overlapping entries of an imposing rising scale figure that permeates the texture. The text is a hymn of praise, and it must have been this link with the mass text, Grazias Agimus Tibi, also meaning we give thanks to thee, that inspired Bach to reuse the movement in the B minor mass, where the music appears not only for the Grazias, but also for the final Dona Nobis Pacem. As so often in his self-borrowings, Bach reworked some of the musical material, reflecting the different pattern of the Latin text and adding extra quaver figuration. Cantata 11, Lobert Gott in Seinen Reichen, also known as the Ascension Oratorio, celebrates the Feast of the Ascension and was first performed at Leipzig on the 19th of May 1735. As in the Christmas and Easter oratorios, much of the music is borrowed from earlier secular cantatas. In the Ascension Oratorio, only the recitatives and the central chorale appear to have been newly composed. The initial chorus was originally used for the reopening of the Thomas Schule following renovation in 1732, while the final chorus originally celebrated the name day of Augustus III in 1733. The oratorio's two arias are also apparently parodied from an earlier cantata whose music has not survived. This did not, however, prevent Bach from reusing the alto aria once more, transposing it from A minor to G minor and shortening it to form the Agnus Dei for the B minor mass. As with the chorus from Cantata 29, Bach reworks the material from the alto aria for the Agnus. Unusually, the melodic line in the latter is simpler than in the cantata, suggesting it may have been based on an earlier unknown source that provided the model for both surviving arias.
The final work in our program is the Mass in G Major, BWV 236, one of Bach's four short mass settings. It probably dates from the late 1730s and may have been written for the court at Dresden. Unlike the cantatas in tonight's programme, it was not a major source of music for the B minor mass, although all its movements were in fact themselves adapted from earlier cantatas. Like Bach's other three surviving settings of the Curie and Gloria for the Lutheran service, it divides the Gloria text into several discrete movements after its initial austere chromatic setting of the Curie. This work contains the most challenging choral writing in our programme, especially in the closing intricate fugue for four voices interspersed with cries of In Gloria Dei Patris, added when the music was reworked from Cantata 17 and using the same rhythm for those words as in the B minor mass. The four works in our concert not only throw light on the way that Bach reused ideas from earlier works in his great B minor mass, but also help to illustrate the musical legacy of his final 27 years at Leipzig. A suitable way to celebrate the tercentenary of his appointment as cantor there in 1723. <laughs> 